So today we're going to talk about regulation of carbohydrate metabolism. And the two main factors in regulating carbohydrate metabolism are going to be the hormones insulin and glucagon. Let's start by talking about glucagon. When you hear the word glucagon, you always have to think gluconeogenesis. Likewise, when you hear insulin, you always have to think glycolysis. Glucagon is going to activate gluconeogenesis. And let's write that because that's very important. And how, do, how is it going to do that? Well, we know from previous lectures that glucagon is going to activate that G protein couple receptor pathway and activate PKA. So it's going to bind, here's our glucagon, it's going to bind to that receptor that's going to move that G protein to adenylcyclase, and adenylcyclase is going to be activated. Once activated, adenylcyclase is going to turn that adenine triphosphate into CAMP, or cyclicin. And then CAMP can then bind to the regulatory site of our PKA, or protein kinase A, and release that catalytic site. So here's our released catalytic site. Because we know protein kinase A is a kinase, we know that it's going to go on and phosphorylate things. So let's look at what it's going to phosphorylate. Well, it's going to come here and phosphorylate our bifunctional enzyme containing phosphofructokinase 2 and fructose bisphosphatase 2. One part of the enzyme is going to be inactive, and one part of it is going to be active. Our inactive part is going to be phosphofructokinase 2, and our active is going to be fructose bisphosphatase 2. So let's write that PKA that this. Okay, so once active, fructose bisphosphatase 2 is going to take off the phosphate on that second carbon of fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate and it's going to convert it to fructose 6 phosphate. And how do we know that it's going to take off that phosphate? Well, it's a phosphatase, so that clues us in into that it's going to take off a phosphate from a molecule. That's what phosphatases do. So once converted into fructose 6-phosphate, fructose 6-phosphate is going to go on and make glucose and make gluconeogenesis or activate gluconeogenesis because we know that gluconeogenesis makes glucose. When we have a low blood sugar, glucagon is released, making glucose through gluconeogenesis. Our fructose bisphosphatase 2 and fructose bisphosphatase 1 the same thing? No. Well, fructose bisphosphatase 2 is a regulatory enzyme, while fructose bisphosphatase 1 is going to be in the gluconeogenesis pathway. And fructose bisphosphatase 1, we know, is going to convert fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into 6-phosphate, right? So how can we remember this? Well, fructose bisphosphatase 2 is going to take off the phosphate on the second carbon of this fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, which is a regulatory molecule, while fructose bisphosphatase 1 is going to take off the phosphate on that carbon 1 of the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate and convert it into fructose 6-phosphate. So if you get confused about that, just make sure you understand that fructose bisphosphatase 2 is not in the pathway and that it's actually regulating the metabolism of carbohydrates. So another big regulator of carbohydrate metabolism, like I mentioned before, is insulin. And when you hear insulin, the first thing that should come to your mind is glycolysis. Glycolysis is going to be activated. So let's write that down. And how are we going to do this? Well, insulin is going to activate phosphatases. And what phosphatases do, like I mentioned, is going to take off phosphates from different enzymes, different molecules. In this case, it's going to take off that phosphate that we put on before uh, out of the bifunctional enzyme, right? So we take off that off phosphate, OK? And now we're going to switch up which uh, part of the enzyme is active and which one is inactive. So the fructose bisphosphatase 2 is going to be inactive, and phosphofructokinase 2 is going to be active. And like I said, that was thought, done by protein phosphatases. So when we have 
phosphofructokinase 2 active. Phosphofructokinase 2 is going to turn fructose 6-phosphate into 2,6-bisphosphate. Because it's a kinase, we know that it's going to add a phosphate to that fructose 6-phosphate. In this case, it's going to add it on the second carbon, right? So increased levels of this are, is going to allosterically bind to PFK1. And like we know, PFK1 converts fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. And that's going to lead to the breakdown of glucose, in other words, glycolysis. So through insulin, we know that we activate glycolysis through activating phosphofructokinase 2 and thereby phosphofructokinase 1. So remember, those two enzymes are different and catalyze different reactions, and they work in different kinds of pathways. This is regulation, and this is going to be glycolysis. So if you don't remember anything from carbohydrate regulation, you should definitely remember two key things. Insulin is going to be glycolysis. It's going to activate glycolysis. And it's going to do this by dephosphorylation. I'm going to put in parentheses phosphatases because that's what does the dephosphorylation. Those are the enzymes that do the dephosphorylation. Now with glucagon, you should remember, like we mentioned, gluconeogenesis and phosphorylation. through kinases. This information should be really helpful not only to understand glycolysis and gluconeogenesis, but also glycogen metabolism and regulation.